The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge gathered this weekend to mark Remembrance Sunday. While they joined other members of the royal family, notably absent was the Queen. Buckingham Palace announced that she would miss the event due to a sprained back. Before heading to the Cenotaph on Sunday, William and Kate spent the evening before at London's Royal Albert Hall for the Festival of Remembrance, a yearly musical tribute to Britain's fallen soldiers. The pair have not returned to the UK together since their departure from the firm last year. Harry has, however, visited twice, once for his grandfather Prince Philip's funeral and later for an unveiling of a statue of his late mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. Tensions between the brothers had been brewing all the way up to Harry's departure. Despite suggestions that their relationship was taking a turn for the worse, William was Harry's best man for his 2018 wedding to Meghan. There were no signs of any rift between the brothers on the big day. Video footage shows the pair laughing and sharing jokes as they approach Windsor Castle. Katie Nichol, speaking during Channel 5's documentary, Royals at Vare, claimed that William went to great lengths to support Harry during his nuptials and steer clear of any doubts he may have had. She claimed, when he realized that Harry and Meghan were going to get married, I think William did what he knew was the right thing to do, which was to throw himself behind it wholeheartedly. Of course, he was Harry's best man, he organized the stag to do the night before the wedding, and he was incredibly supportive. You could see how happy he was. Who knows what he was thinking privately. Reports had famously suggested that William had told Harry not to rush into his relationship with Meghan, the pair having only met in 2016 following their wedding, Harry and Meghan enjoyed a stint of good press and public relations. Don't miss however, in 2018, reports surfaced about Meghan and Kate's later dismissed drama. A Telegraph piece at the time reported that Meghan had made Kate cry over flower girl dresses for her wedding. Later on, The Sun ran a story claiming the two had got into an explosive row after Meghan was rude to a member of Kate's staff. The palace, however, issued a statement of denial an extremely rare thing. A source told the royal journalist, Harry felt William wasn't TMT rolling out the red carpet for Meghan, and told him so. They had a bit of a fallout, which was only resolved when Charles stepped in and asked William to make an effort. That TMS when the Cambridges invited the Sussexes to spend Christmas with them. A string of further reports of falling outs followed, with Harry and Meghan announcing their decision to step back as senior royals on January 8th in an Instagram post. Duchess was attending an Earthshot event with Prince William to encourage children to think about ideas to help save the planet. The royal couple visited Kew Gardens in London in order to take part in a Generation Earthshot event with pupils from the Heathlands, school in Hounslow. Kate stepped out in a brilliant green coat and top, paired with black wide-legged trousers while William complimented the Duchess in a navy suit. Twitter account Royal T commented on Kate's clothing decision in a tweet, green for an Earthshot event, at least we never have to wonder what message the Duchess of Cambridge is trying to send with her literal outfit choices. The Twitter user also made a prediction the Royal will send a coded message with her clothing for the awards ceremony on Sunday. Also, smart to do a rewear for this, I'm expecting the same for the awards ceremony. They wrote, I'm betting she'll have an existing gown altered, Twitter user at Cladams2 predicted. I have yet to see a color on her that does not look good, Twitter user at Sabira Lawn marveled. But she does make appropriate choices. I do wonder if she TMS going to rewear an outfit or use a sustainable designer as Kayla previously mentioned. I TMM also going with her rewearing something while others said they would have done the same. I absolutely would have worn green too, at Dusty Rain wrote. The Earthshot Prize was founded by the Prince to incentivize change and help to repair our planet over the next 10 years, and is centered around five categories protect and restore nature, clean our air, revive our oceans, build a waste-free world, and fix our climate. Dot in a statement William described the environmental prize, the earth is at a tipping point and we face a stark choice, either we continue as we are and irreparably damage our planet, 
or we remember our unique power as human beings and our continual ability to lead, innovate and problem solve. People can achieve great things. The next 10 years present us with one of our greatest tests a decade of action to repair the earth. William spent two years working on the project with the Royal Foundation. The idea was founded during his visit to Namibia, Tanzania and Kenya in 2018 when the Prince met conservation workers. Duke of Sussex has attended a polo match in Colorado marking his first public appearance since the birth of his daughter, Lilibet Diana, in June. Thanks to the Duke and other guests' trademark efforts, $3.5 million, 2.5 million, was raised to provide funding to support vulnerable children in southern Africa. Argentine polo star Nacho Figueras, who is believed to be a close friend of the Duke, shared a photograph with him on his Instagram account. He wrote alongside the snap, How lucky I am to be able to ride along with you in your mission of making the world a better place for people not as fortunate as us. It is your commitment and passion to give back that is my inspiration. It was so great spending a couple of days with you my friend. Prince Harry scored two of his team TMS3 goals, securing their victory 3-0. He has also pledged 1.1 million from the proceeds of his upcoming book towards Centibale TMS mission. The Duke was praised by fans on social media, as they celebrated the initiative. One person tweeted, seems Centibale benefited from its co-founder's move and is reaping the rewards. Another user added, and that TMS a brilliant new record. UGov, a British market research and data analytics firm, recently conducted a survey to find out exactly, who the most popular members of the royal family are. Is the Queen number one on the list though? Who didn't make the final cut? Read on to see who the British public rank as their top 5 most popular royals. Leading the way with a 72% popularity score, Queen Elizabeth was voted by far the most popular royal on the list. Next year will mark the Queen TMS 70th anniversary as monarch of the United Kingdom and Commonwealth. At 95 years old, Her Majesty seems to only be getting more popular with age. Despite his passing, Earlier this year, Prince Philip still ranks highly in the thoughts of the British public. The Duke of Edinburgh scored a 62% popularity score to make it to number 2 on this list. Coming in at third place is Prince William. The Duke of Cambridge, like his grandfather, secured a popularity score of 62%. Interestingly, he also ranked 3 places and nearly 20% higher in the public TMS thinking than his father, Prince Charles. Finishing just behind her husband was Kate, Duchess of Cambridge. Kate was liked by a respectable 60% of those who took part in the survey. The public voted her as one of three women to make the survey's top five most popular royals. Completing the top five is Princess Anne. The Queen TMS second child and only daughter was awarded a 54% popularity result. Her closest challenger was her older brother, Prince Charles, who scored 45%. Queen Elizabeth II, 95, was forced to cancel her planned two-day visit to Northern Ireland on Wednesday. It came as the monarch underwent preliminary investigations at London TMS Private King Edward VII Hospital on Wednesday night. Her Majesty then returned to Windsor Castle at lunchtime on Thursday and was in good spirits. Buckingham Palace said. Her Majesty was given medical advice to rest for a few days after a busy few weeks of public engagements. The Queen TMS cancellation would have hit her hard, according to Zoe Forsey, who hosts royal podcast pod Save the Queen trademark. In the latest episode of the show, released on Thursday, the royal commentator discussed the Queen TMS schedule, and her health with Daily Mirror royal editor, Russell Myers. Ms. Forsey said, we know obviously she said that it was with deep regret and that she was really disappointed she couldn't TMT go. So, we know that this is something she doesn't TMT like. She TMS obviously very committed to her work. None of the royals like cancelling engagements but the Queen in particular, this probably would have hit her quite hard. 
He TMS so late notice as well, their TMS so many plans in place. As part of her two-day visit the Queen had been due to attend a church service in Armagh. The centenary commemoration was to mark the partition of Ireland and the creation of Northern Ireland. However, before the Queen TMS cancellation, Ireland TMS President Michael D. Higgins had already ruled out his attendance. Speaking to reporters in Rome last month, Ireland TMS Head of State claimed that the church service had been politicized. He said, what had once been an invitation to religious service, or a religious event had become, in fact, a political statement. What began as a religious service or reconciliation is now the celebrating, the marking, I think is the word used, the partition of Ireland and the creation of Northern Ireland, dot it TMS a different thing. The politician drew backlash from the DUP and others over his refusal to attend the service. However, he denied snubbing anyone or boycotting the event, explaining that the only reason he was not attending was in relation to the title of the event. Speaking on Pod Save the Queen, Mr Myers said the Queen TMS visit would have been a big deal for the people of Northern Ireland. All the reporters, all the photographers were there, so it TMS a big deal for the people of Northern Ireland, as well as for the people of Belfast. She was going to do a couple of community engagements and on Thursday she was expected to join a church service in Armagh, which was quite controversial actually. Her attendance, along with Boris Johnson, was going to be quite controversial, because it was going to be commemorating the centenary of the formation of Northern Ireland. Mr Myers said that the event, which Mr Higgins' trademark had decided not to go to, was going to be a big occasion. He added that her absence would take the gloss of the service. To subscribe to Pod Save the Queen trademark go to your normal podcast provider.